Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And brothers and sisters, as we come to celebrate again in the Eucharist as a community of faith, people here are doing the live streaming in order to connect with you out there on Facebook Live. That we continue to pray as a one community of faith in this Eucharist to give thanks and praise to God. And as we come to celebrate together, let us first acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were saying to heal the contrite heart, Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. Have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Señor Dios, protector de los que en ti confían, sin ti nada es fuerte ni santo. Multiplica sobre nosotros tu misericordia para que, bajo tu dirección, de tal modo nos sirvamos ahora de los bienes pasajeros. Que nuestro corazón esté puesto en los bienes eternos. Oh God, protector of those who hope in you without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that, can, that ever endure. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
a reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, Oh Lord, my God, you have made me your servant, came to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had made this request. So God said to him, because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding, so that you may know what is right. I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up until now. And after you, there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. are called according to his purpose. 
For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. And at the tiempo, Jesus Dios a sus discípulos. El reino de los cielos se parece a un tesoro escondido en un campo. El que lo encuentro, el que lo encuentra, lo vuelve a esconder, y lleno de la alegría, va y vende cuanto tiene y compra aquel campo. El reino de los cielos se parece también a un comerciante al ver las finas que al encontra una, par, una perla muy valiosa, va y vende cuanto tiene y la compra. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. In the first reading, it definitely talks about uh, Solomon, and we know Solomon is, a, uh, is famous for his wisdom. Uh, but we really need to know, and I think Solomon knew that, he had knowledge and he had wisdom, because he knew what he could ask for, but he had the wisdom to know exactly what it was that he, he was going to state. And, and, and ask for as that uh, gift that God was giving to him. And we have that knowledge versus wisdom. 
and it is said that uh, an example I heard was the knowledge is knowing something. Like the, the, the example was uh, knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit, but having wisdom is not putting that tomato in your fruit salad. So it's knowledge and practicability, you know, with wisdom to uh, be like, you can know what to say, but the wisdom is knowing when to say it and if to say it at all. And I think in Solomon, when he prayed for an understanding heart so that he could reign well, so that he could do what God was asking him, and he didn't just look upon himself, he didn't look for what can I get out of it. He didn't look into the selfishness of what the answer could have been. He, he looked at what was best for his life and for others. I think uh, since he knew he was going to be king, he really was very wise. And maybe you could say he was very selfish too. In, in a sense, because he asked, help me get an understanding, or have an understanding heart so I can do what I'm being told to do, what God is telling me to be the king of this nation and of these people. Uh, so maybe he was a little selfish in saying, I need help. But that again is wisdom, that he knew what he needed and that he couldn't do it by himself. And so, and the parables also speak, I think, about knowledge and wisdom. I mean, knowing that they know the value of what they find, right? You have to know the value of something uh, or, or know what it is and if it's valuable or not in order to then do something. I mean, if, if, if the treasure they found was fool's, fool's gold or some other uh, flashy-looking uh, rock and mineral, well, to know that and the wisdom to not go sell everything for what looks to be sparkly and flashy. No, in the parables, Jesus is saying, you have to know what that value is of what you find, of what you have, and then I think the wisdom is then you go and do something about it. And in the parables that we heard, or the, the, the reading, uh, and there's other parables where they say, you know, somebody finds a treasure in a plot of land and he buries it again and then he goes and buys, he sells everything else he has, which must have been less valuable, and he buys the value of the land, but knowing there's a hidden value behind it. Uh, we are talking that it's with Deacon and myself, and we said, it sounds like a shady real estate deal where he wasn't really upfront, full disclosure of what he was getting. Um, but it, it's that knowledge and that was, he knew the value of it. And then he did, using wisdom, he was able to do uh, the right thing in, 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 in getting that treasure that somebody had left behind. It's kind of, you know, a finder's keeper. What, what is it? I can't even think about it. The one who finds it keeps it, right? That's what he did. Um, he followed that saying. And then also, the merchant of, of, of the pearls, again, knowing the value of the pearls, of the pearl he found or, or, or that he, he encountered and he found, and selling everything and saying, what I have is not anywhere near the value of this. And what is the parable saying? That the high value, that valuable pearl, or that treasure that is hidden in the, in the property and the land, uh, is like the, is the kingdom of God. He uses it. The, the kingdom of God is like that treasure that is found hidden. Or the, or the kingdom of God is like that fine pearl of great value that, that they find. Again, <clears throat> We know what we have. We hopefully know the value of God's kingdom. And then what do we do to acquire it and to stay 
in the kingdom of God. That's where we need to know that we have knowledge, but then wisdom. To say some other things in this world look very sparkly, look very flashy, and they look like lots of fun, etc. But is it more valuable than the kingdom of God? Is it worth more than what God has in store for each one of us, for you and for me? And live a, to live a life of faith as, as Jesus taught us. Is, is what is offered to us by whatever the world and our society, etc. Is it worth losing the gift, the valuable gift of eternal life with God? And I think <clears throat> that assurances of eternal life to come is what God offers us. Something of great value for eternity, forever. And it also pays, we could say, pays dividends in the world now by offering us inner peace or joy of the Lord uh, and an overall uh, fuller uh, life during this time here on earth uh, to be able to get through the events and the, uh, the, the, the events and the going-ons of this world uh, before we reach the eternal life. So hopefully, again, we, we do the research, we, we use knowledge and say, what is more valuable and what am I going to need and for the long term, for the eternal life? The, is, is the material value of certain things here on earth worth it to lose the value of a life, of the eternal life of, with God and that eternity? Uh, we need to know that. We need to pray. And hopefully we come to the same conclusion as Solomon that say we need more help. We need God's help. We need to follow God in our faith, uh, no, make our faith stronger, uh, that wisdom to, to, to learn more about our faith, to practice it more, to strengthen it via many ways, via prayer, via other type of knowledge and, and absorbing it and understanding it, or uh, even the sacraments, to know the value of the sacraments and the, the grace we receive from God through those sacraments. Um, knowledge and wisdom of our faith and how we live it out. Uh, and hopefully uh, we know the value, just like the, the, um, the individuals in the parables, that we know and truly understand the value of what God is offering us and that we pray that we receive and have and use the wisdom to follow and to live it out so that we can see the value of God's kingdom is much more valuable than all of the valuable things we have here on earth in order to have that eternal life. So uh, we pray that we will have that, that we can um, understand God's way and God's offering, what he offers us in that kingdom that he uses in the parable. And that we be like those people who find it, have great value, and have the wisdom to act upon it. And to live our lives on the road that leads to this great uh, kingdom of God, this great, uh, this kingdom of God of great value. Uh, but we need wisdom, and that we would pray not only for ourselves, but things for ourselves, the material things that we, like Solomon, pray for the wisdom of knowledge of God, of having a understanding heart to live out our lives, whatever vocation we may have, uh, to do the right things and to lead ourselves and others to the kingdom of God. In the lectura de hoy, in the lectura de hoy, in the primera lectura, Escuchamos de el que iba a ser el rey uh, que escogieron después del rey David, uh, Salomón, 
iba a ser el rey de Israel y Dios le pregunta ¿qué don quieres? ¿qué regalo quieres que te dé en este momento que vas a tomar esa posesión de esa nación de Israel? y lo que pide lo que él pide en ese momento no es algo para él mismo de, de valor material de este mundo pero pide que le dé un corazón un corazón que puede entender lo que se tiene que ser para ser un, un buen rey, para que su reino sea, sea, sea algo uh, que, lo haga, que lo haga bien, que el reino de él durante su tiempo con ese pueblo que Dios le ha dado sea un reino de un rey bueno y que pueda hacer las buenas decisiones que se tienen que hacer ahora, esa es la sabiduría de saber realmente qué es lo que necesita ¿verdad? el conocimiento es eh, saber unas cosas saber cosas del mundo pero la sabiduría, podemos decir es más de Dios y saber cuándo hacer cosas y cómo hacerlas el conocimiento podemos conocer y saber de muchas cosas, pero la sabiduría nos ayuda en nuestra vida eh, cuando necesitamos hacer cosas y pedirle a Dios esa sabiduría del Espíritu Santo para poder vivir nuestras vidas en este mundo. Las parábolas del Evangelio hablan de, de estas personas que encuentran algo de un gran valor. Pues ese es el conocimiento, saben que lo que encontraron tiene un gran valor en este mundo. Pero la sabiduría es lo que hacen. Van y calculan, pues todo lo que tengo, puedo comprar ese campo, o puedo comprar esa perla más muy valiosa, y venden, van y venden cuanto tienen, y compran ese campo, o compran esa perla, porque saben que es y tiene, porque es y porque tiene más valor de todo lo que ellos tienen, ¿verdad? Uh, eso es lo que Dios nos pide a nosotros, de no solamente saber de nuestra vida, de nuestra fe, de lo que nuestro Señor Jesucristo nos enseñó, pero también saber, tener sabiduría, usar el Espíritu Santo, la sabiduría del Espíritu Santo para vivir esa vida, a saber qué es lo que tenemos que hacer para llegar a la vida eterna ¿verdad? ojalá somos como los que encuentran algo, de saber que la vida con Dios en la vida eterna vale más de todo lo que podemos tener en este mundo que es temporalmente ¿verdad? Uh, ellos en la parábola saben lo que encuentran y lo que tiene de valor Ojalá que nosotros también sabemos eso, que, que si se encuentra un tesoro de este mundo que no es realmente plata ni oro, no algo valioso, pero se ve como una piedra valiosa o, o otro metal que tenga uh, brillo y que se brilla más y todo eso, de saber que ese no tiene valor, se ve puede ser que se vea como algo bonito y valioso, pero en, el, en este mundo puede ser que sí se vea de mucho valor, pero en la vida de fe no tiene nada de valor, ¿verdad? Esto vamos a decir es lo que es el pecado, lo que es algo mal para nosotros. Se ve bien, se ve como algo bueno que podemos hacer y tener alegría y, y ver, estar bien con eso, pero es algo malo para nosotros, para nuestra vida de fe. Uh, pues el, Dios quiere que veamos, que, nos, que se, sepamos de saber lo que realmente es de Dios y lo que es del mundo, ¿verdad? Que no tiene valor para la vida eterna, pero las cosas de Dios y saber esas cosas y las abriría para vivir una vida de fe y llegar a la vida, de, de vida eterna con Dios. Nos pedimos la gracia para saber, pero más importante, 
tener esa sabiduría y vivirla en nuestra fe. ¿Y cómo la vamos a vivir para poder llegar y vivir uh, y, y, y encontrar lo que tiene valor, pero vivir la vida con Dios en la vida eterna? Lo pedimos esa como el rey Salomón que pidió la sabiduría también nosotros de pedirle a Dios más sabiduría en nuestras vidas de fe.
for all those names that are written in the intentions books that is in the vestibule and the intentions for this mass for Alexia Roosevelt Elizabeth Atichuk of Carmelia McBride of Lloyd Goulet of Kevin and Rene Columbus wedding anniversary of St. Monica Sodality. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our beloved dead, especially for Monsignor Joseph Malak, for her Boto, Vines, and Bertha Martinez, that they may come into God's kingdom of light, love and peace we pray to the lord lord, lord hear our prayer lord god your word is more precious to us than thousands of gold and silver pieces help us to so live our faith with conviction that all the world may be drawn into your kingdom and we place our needs before you this day renew in us the image and likeness of your son he who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This time we continue with the liturgy of the Eucharist. We prepare the altar. And we ask that, that if you out uh, there, everyone, if you're still able to uh, financially support the parish, St. Lawrence Parish, to do so through the online link, as well as, your, or you can do it through uh, your envelopes. You can mail them in or drop them off through the mail slot at the front door of the parish office. Uh, we will, we do have people throughout the week that we have to recover those and, and um, that's possible as well. So uh, mail them, drop them off, or using the online. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> Recibe, Señor, los dones que por tu generosidad te presentamos para que, por el poder, poder de tu gracia, estos sagrados misterios santifiquen toda nuestra vida y nos conduzcan a la felicidad eterna. Accept, O Lord, we pray the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts 
that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an indeed death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end, we acclaim. saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Te damos gracias porque nos haces dignos de servirte en tu presencia. Te pedimos humildemente que el Espíritu Santo congregue en la unidad a cuantos participamos del cuerpo y la sangre de Cristo. Acuérdate, Señor, de tu iglesia extendida por toda la tierra y con el Papa Francisco, con nuestro obispo Oscar y todos los pastores que cuidan de tu pueblo, llévala a su perfección por la caridad. Acuérdate también de nuestros hermanos que se durmieron en la esperanza de la resurrección y de todos los que han muerto en tu misericordia, dígnos a contemplar la luz de tu rostro. Ten misericordia de todos nosotros y así con María, la Virgen Madre de Dios, su Esposo San José, los apóstoles y cuantos vivieron en tu amistad a través de los tiempos, merezcamos por tu Hijo Jesucristo compartir la vida eterna y cantar tus alabanzas. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
And at the Savior's command and for by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. La paz del Señor es de siempre con ustedes. Love of each other, sign of peace.
Oremos. Habiendo recibido, Señor, esa memorial perpetua de la pasión de tu Hijo, concédenos que este prep, we pray that this gift which he himself gave us beyond all telling may profit us for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. For some announcements that reminders of, of the uh, mass and reservations for our outdoor mass. Excuse me. Uh, a reminder about our outdoor masses if anyone is interested in uh, coming to one of the outdoor masses, uh, which are Monday. Saturday, 8.30 a.m., Saturday evening at 6.45, Sunday at 8 a.m. at 9.30, all those are outdoor. English is at 12.30 on Sundays, right after the live stream. The live stream, or the 11 o'clock is a private mass live stream. Somebody, uh, there are there is somebody usually in the office. They're not due to reduced hours and other events going on. Uh, they can make reservations for you on that. Uh, drive up confessions. Next confession will be this Wednesday, 29th, from 11 to noon, and from 6 to 7. Uh, for the drive up confessions during the show. Uh, there, uh, you please. Post or on the online, they're posted at our parish website or Facebook or other social media. Uh, you just come and park on um, one of the parking spots or under the solar panels, wherever it's shady, um, and you stay in the driver's side, down your window on the passenger side. That's where I will come, and then we will. Confession at that time. And it has social distancing as well as 